All right, now, so we're taking the conversation uh, further now. It's uh, that time of the year again for the Global Wealth Festival. The event is themed on how you can grow your finances and uh, your business despite recession or living in a third world economy. Let's talk to the convener now, Dr. Stephen Akintayo. Uh, Join us uh, via Zoom. Uh, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Yeah, you're, you're practically a, a friend of the house at, at this point. But <laughs> what inspired the Global Wealth Festival, you know, originally? And why do you think it's important, you know, for Nigerians of today? Well, um, we, we realized that, thank you for having me, by the way. We realized that the concept of wealth has been distorted amongst Africans, you know, Years ago, religion, foreign religion came into Africa, and we lost our initial heritage where we celebrate the concept of being wealthy. Um, so you see, uh, the Westerners came and gave us religion, took our wealth, told us we should focus on going to heaven, and we don't need to bother about being wealthy here on earth. And years later, Africa is a impoverished poverty capital of the world, and people are no longer thinking of how do we create wealth? What's the concept of real wealth creation in a legitimate way? Uh, so we felt both those at home and those in diaspora are struggling. $10 an hour, $15 an hour, 15 hours a day job for many in diaspora, literally throwing away their dreams and struggling. I would say we need to bring back that conversation. That's why we start with US, Dallas, Texas, and we did London uh, episode, and now we're bringing it to Nigeria. Oh, quite interesting. And, you know, you've had, you know, all those uh, episodes in, you know, different countries coming down to Nigeria. Great. But uh, can you tell us the impact of uh, the ones you've had, you know, in, in other countries? Uh, huge. It was amazing. Dallas, we had Grant Cardone. He's a top real estate uh, guru. Uh, over $8 billion in real estate assets. And several other speakers who are African-Americans and Nigerians as well, who are in diaspora, who share their story, how they built where we had the first female to own a bank uh, in the U.S. She shared her experience. And, and what, what we saw with participants was they were so excited. There was that joy that I can make it even here. Because what happened with a lot of people who migrate um, to, in, you know, to diaspora, US, UK, or other parts of the world, we throw away our dreams. We literally tell ourselves we can't make it in those parts of the world. And that is probably just for the whites or for a certain set of people. And with that conference, and you seeing people who have made it in that economy, uh, it, it gave a lot of the participants hope. We got fantastic testimony. London edition. One of the speakers was uh, Alexandra Musu, has two Guinness Book of Record, grew up, I mean, Nigerian, but grew up uh, in the UK, uh, was the first to, to be known for the ringtone, having Afro beats on ringtone, um, you know, did the first most expensive phone, most expensive suits. And so how did you do it? How did you succeed in the UK economy despite being black? And that conversation was just amazing. And we, we were excited. We, 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 we were pushing this move. And I do, I do remember those uh, ringtones you, you talked about <laughs> back there. But in the lead up to you know elections in Nigeria, there's a lot of uncertainty in the business and uh, finance community. What's your view on the situation, and how can the younger generation create certainty around their finances? Well, the, the truth is that you and I have to become personally responsible for our finances. Um, politicians will promise us, you know, heaven and earth. We all know that election period, there's nothing they will say to get our votes, but we have to face the reality. You and I are responsible for the outcome of our lives. And there is so much opportunity in Nigeria. And what we've decided to do is to say, we will bring to you people who have made it. In Nigeria, we're going to be having uh, um, Dr. Cosmos Maduka. Cosmos Maduka started cost charities with 200 naira in the same Nigeria. Okay, and his assets is over a billion dollars today. How did he do it? So what we've done is to say we will assemble people who are not just thriving, 
were exceptionally successful despite the challenges in Nigeria, and we'll have them talk to us uh, and, and share their own journey of how they've been able to do it so that you and I can take responsibility. Ultimately, I've said this a million times, the wealth of a nation is directly proportional to the wealth of the citizens. And don't let any position deceive you. America is the richest, is the world power, richest country in the world because top 100 richest people in the world, America probably will take 50% of that. Americans are 50% of the top 100 richest people in the world. So hence the nation, of course, is the richest nation in the world. So if we're going to turn Nigeria around from the Africa poverty capital of the world and all of that, we have to start empowering our people showing them how those who made it legitimately have done it and how they can do it themselves. I guess we have to make our people uh, rich, you know, at this point so that they can pay more taxes and the government can it's actually, you know, get more uh, at this time. But what uh, unique factor would you say Nigerian leadership is lacking and is something business leaders can easily, like, answer to? Well, I, I think the relationship between you know, the business leaders and, and the, those in, in politics is too wide. Uh, I feel we need to bring it closer. And I'm, and I'm talking about, I'm not saying that entrepreneurs necessarily need to go into politics, but that when you as a politician become empowered and now you've been elected, you need to close the gap with those who are practically on ground doing business and say, how do we solve your sector? What do we do? I, I'm not necessarily giving you a title or a position, but can I add you to a conversation on how we can solve the problem in the power sector, in the real estate sector, in the, in the oil and gas sector, and, and not just play politics with, this, with the recommendation, but genuinely seek to, to work together. And we've seen that work in other parts of the world where, where you know, business leaders are helping uh, policymakers execute uh, transformational concepts and, and policies to change that particular nation. So I feel that's important. We need to close that gap. I hope uh, in the next um, uh, government, uh, 2023, that will happen. Quite interesting. But, you, you know, your company, GTEx Holdings, you know, you, you, you're present in, you know, countries like the UK, US, Dubai, and uh, the rest. But in, in terms of growing finances, you know, what is the main key that is obtainable in those economies that you think we can, you know, reenact re here in Nigeria? Beautiful. Uh, I, I think number one is the fact that ease to do business. Um, I mean, Dubai, and US, and UK, you don't need to know anybody uh, to get anything done. You need a document, you need support from government. Um, you don't, it's not a function of, uh, um, I, the, the president is my brother or the senator is my cousin. You can just get what you need the proper way. Also is the, you know, is uh, access to funds. Um, I, I've only shared how, you know, opening bank, corporate bank account in different countries. Um, they were asking us how much loan do we need? What, what financing do we need? You can't get that in Nigeria. And even when you get a loan, the interest rate is just ridiculous. So entrepreneurs definitely need uh, policies that makes it a lot easier uh, for them to be able to do business better in Africa, uh, particularly in Nigeria, um, like it is in those parts of the world. It's easier for nations like America to demand that the wealthy pay more in taxes because genuinely the government support those businesses. Elon Musk was bailed out how many times now? By the American government. Right, so if he's not the richest man in the world, America has the right to say, hey, we need you to pay more. Because we, we, we know how many times we, we helped you, right? We know how many tax incentives, tax break we've given to your business uh, because you are into the renewable energy sector. So this government needs to get involved in helping, knowing that the success of businesses is the success of the administration. It means there will be more jobs. It means you can have more in taxes. It means that the people can, can the, the development can take place uh, because government can do everything. So yes, we've seen a better 
we've operated businesses in different sectors or different countries that are way better in terms of the infrastructure. But we also believe that can happen in Nigeria. We just need our leaders to be willing, genuinely willing to change things. And I hope they will. I hope it's, uh, we all just can hope, for my brother. <laughs> right, well, we're hopeful, we are. But, but for many who want to attend you know, the event, is it a free event? You know, see, you, you have a number of, you know, internationally acclaimed speakers coming. So I, I want to know, is it free? Well, nothing of value is free. Right. <laughs> but what we've done is to subsidize the event um, where people can even right now, as we're watching this, get a 50% discount, further discount on, on the event if they are getting their tickets today. So you can just visit globalworldfestival.com and then use the coupon code GWF uh, Lagos. With that code, they will get extra 50% discount if they are getting their tickets today for the event. Uh, we have, you know, Les Brown, we have Robert Kiyosaki, Brian Tracy, uh, amongst others coming. Uh, they have done a recorded session, because uh, they're not coming physically. they uh, done a recorded session that will be played during the event. And we have, of course, other speakers who are coming physically. And we, we really look forward to having a very great time. I'm just excited about it. Well, I'm sure it'll be very interesting. And I'm sure you have my ticket waiting, you know, for me oh, somewhere. So <laughs> you, have <laughs> <to be. laughs> you have to be. You have to All right, thank you so much, Dr. Stephen Akinta Convina, uh, Global Wealth Festival. It's great having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate thank you. it. All right, now after the break, uh, Apex Commodities uh, Market Update is next. Do stay with us. This is Business Morning.